Good morning, friends. It is August the 29th, and uh, I'm just giving you a check-in. I did not have treatment this week. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, think uh, or thinking we're thinking that I still have that weekly treatment on Tuesdays, but um, things have changed. So my last chemo was the 13th of August, and at this point, last week, I did have Herceptin, and then they're going to go every three weeks. Um, so now it'll be on a 21-day cycle, and they'll be giving me a full dose of Herceptin and Progetta. Uh, so I did request a, a meeting with my oncologist because apparently that's not something they do when you finish chemo. So uh, I did get in with Dr. Rob, and it, it was reassuring to meet with her and have her explain the differences in the full dose versus there's like a subcutaneous injection. I think it's like Fezgo or something that also is similar, um, but you know, I'm gonna have to do the research on the real differences because ultimately nobody could really say like, oh, this one lasts in the body longer, or this one is more toxic to your heart or anything that actually uh, matters to me for details. Um, so they just said people seem to tolerate it fine. And since I've been on Herceptin and Progetta, I'm most likely fine to tolerate the larger doses. And that, you know, it really comes down to convenience to not have to come in every week, which you know, I'm already doing treatments every week, so at this point, I'm kind of in the groove of it, um, but I am looking forward to not having to go in every week, so of course the convenience does, um, does kind of fit, um, but I, uh, I have a lot I could say about those appointments and my disappointment in the system and that I had to request an appointment and that I felt passed off on PAs that weren't really up to my case and had no idea about my journey or anything, where I started, where I'm at now. So it's a frustrating system to navigate. I'll just say that. And if you've ever been in this system, um, you know that, <laughs> especially if you have a lot of questions, if you're inquisitive, if you're passive and believe that, you know, everything your doctor tells you is gold and that, you know, everything, they've got your back covered in all directions, then I'm sure the system's very nice to you and navigates you just fine. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of balls that get dropped and there's a lot of pieces that they don't take into account. So I'm still getting a lot of mixed information about um, whether or not to do certain supplements around surgery. Ultimately, everyone says don't do anything, but um, you know, I'm definitely doing my own research to find out what would give me the best chance to make it long term, you know, because the surgery is a risk in itself. But I have been scheduled that's September 11th. So we're in the countdown of two weeks, basically. Um, so, so we'll just have to roll with that. Uh, last night I did have my first breast MRI that involved gadolinium and gadolinium is a toxic heavy metal. They say it's, you know, safe in the form that they give it. The older forms were more dangerous to the kidneys. Um, they have improved the solution a bit, but, uh, it's still heavy metal. And there are a lot of reported cases of, um, gadolinium toxicity, uh, especially if you've had it more than three times, some people, get the toxicity at three. Um, luckily, this was my first and hopefully only um, scan with gadolinium, but uh, I did do some research beforehand knowing that I've met a lot of people that have had toxicity with gadolinium. It's a neurotoxin. So uh, some of the research I came across and Dr. Hancock um, helped guide me a bit is to do ALA, so alpha lopaic acid. And so I have a supplement that's alpha lopaic acid. This is the R form, which is more bioavailable. So R alpha lopaic acid. Um, I've got another one that involves a little bit of berberine as well. So this is glycoberberine. This has also got some uh, ALA in it, alpha lopaic acid. Um, ALA helps you detox heavy metals. Uh, it does a lot of stuff. It also drops your blood sugar so it can be really helpful and effective for certain cancers. There's people that do all sorts of forms of ALA. Um, and since my scan was last night, it takes about 24 to 48 hours to detox uh, gadolinium. So I am also going over to uh, Marshall, Dr. T's, in just a few minutes um, to go get a ALA IV. Um, so that's really exciting that that's you know, out there. So I'm gonna go get an ALA IV. Hopefully that'll help my body um, grab onto that heavy metal and pull it out of my body so it's not resting, you know, in every cell because <laughs> it can. Some people hold on to it more than others. It depends on your body and your detox pathways. I have learned my detox pathways are 
not great. So uh, anything I can do to enhance that is helpful for me. I also uh, have a killer acupuncturist that um, showed me or told me about Quicksilver Scientific. This company is awesome. Um, they do a, a liposomal EDTA, EDTA, and that's Quis Quicksilver Scientific. Um, EDTA also has lopaic acid in it, so it has ALA, um, and the EDTA is sort of a another binder of heavy metals, um, and you can use this as all, as all sorts of different um, toxins in the body. It's a liquid, so I just, you know, hold it under my tongue for like 30 to 60 seconds. I think you can go up to 90, they say 30 to 60, so, and you can do it a couple times. I've been mostly doing it empty stomach um, in the mornings, and if I haven't had dinner too late, I do it in the evenings too. So that's a super good binder as well. Um, I was also adding this in after chemo. I wasn't necessarily on a heavy metal chemo, but I was on um, chemo. So I wanted to make sure that whatever came along with those um, IVs, I could help detox. Uh, so I, I was adding that in in the last week and, week and a half or so. Uh, and now that I'm getting close to my surgery, I'm back on the wonderful Pectisol. Uh, this is a killer good product. This is a powder. They do have it in pill form, which I would consider if I have to stay on it a long time. But Pectisol is, is basically, it's a modified citrus pectin. Um, some people just take it for general health reasons. It helps communication of cells, it helps your immune system, all sorts of stuff. But what it really does for cancer patients is it helps to minimize the chance of metastases, especially with um, surgery. Anytime you get a biopsy or you have a tumor that's been cut into, you can use Pectisol um, around that time. So I'm doing it two weeks before surgery and I'll probably keep up about six weeks after surgery because of the inflammatory cascade that occurs. I want my cells to work the best they can. Um, so this, the modified citrus pectin helps to, from what I understand, and I'm sure um, there's more information out there I could be reading, but I'm a little overloaded at the moment, but it, it kind of helps to thicken the extracellular fluid, so essentially it's not as easy for the cancer cells to just pass through cell walls and move where they, wherever they want. It allows you to, um, uh, to create a little better integrity around the cell walls and also improve your immune system's reaction time to sort of gobble up the cancer cells as they're migrating. So Pectisol is really great um, to do around any time you're cutting into the tumor or having surgery or if you've been diagnosed with cancer and you're worried, you know, the timeline's creeping along and you're worried about a metastasis, um, get yourself on Pectisol immediately. Uh, it's not that expensive, it's totally worth it. I don't like the taste at all and it really helps to have a frother because uh, it kind of makes it more like a, I don't know, this is like a lime flavor, but it kind of tastes like an orange creamsicle sort of, but in like, like to me, not in a good way. Um, of course, Sarah tried it the one time I made it really good and she was like, this is delicious. So I'm trying to enjoy it like it's a treat um, because I'm gonna be on it for a while and you have to do it with an empty stomach. Uh, so I like the frother. I think it helps blend it a little bit. Otherwise it gets clumpy in water and it's, that's especially not fun to drink. The other one I just uh, learned about from Dr. Hancock at the Mistletoe Clinic is Genistein. Genistein, if you can see that. Um, this is made from MCS Labs. I love this company. These are the people out of the Netherlands and they have no additives. So there's no um, preservatives or additives in their supplements. They're probably the most pure things I've come across in the supplement world. Um, so I have moved a lot of my uh, products to the office to MCS and also just in my life. Um, if I'm gonna continue with supplements, I'll probably continue to take their stuff because uh, they're just, they're really straightforward and honest and they do super good products. So the Genistein uh, is another helper for reducing metastases. So again, I take this on an empty stomach. This is just a pill form. You just have to take one, not too bad. I take it when I take the Pectisol um, and I'm trying to make these like two to three times a day type thing, um, just to really give myself as much of a chance as I can before surgery, um, you know, to reduce the, the very likely chance of metastases. Um, so I'm just taking it, taking it real, trying to, trying to just uh, weigh out all of my options and make sure I've got the best approach. 
The other thing I need to think about adding is more collagen and protein at this stage to make sure my body has the building blocks available before surgery. I've also upped my B vitamins. Um, I'll do a video before surgery about those specific things I'm doing prior to surgery and what I choose to do around surgery, whether that is what people recommend or not. Um, ultimately, you have to make your own choice in life, as is anything in life. So I've got a few things that uh, I've got a little bit more research to do, and I'll share with you guys when I get a little closer. Um, I think that's a pretty good 10-minute uh, video. I got a little bit of very green green tea. I think this stuff is just vibrant green. It's really quite pretty. I'm sipping on that, and I'm going to go get my ALL IV, ALA IV, and, uh, and then I'm going to do hopefully a little bit of work at the office today and tomorrow, and then it's a nice long weekend, so I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend, uh, and stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.